In this video, I'll be teaching you how to write the electron configuration for an atom. So, electron configurations. Uh, as I said in the previous video, the one on the basic principles, I will be making probably two or three more videos only on electric configura uh, electron configuration because it's a it's a topic with many exceptions so I'd like to cover everything so in this one I'll be teaching you how to write the electron configuration like basics and the electron configuration of an atom because it will change when it comes to ions and transition metals So as I said, many many exceptions. There's no really like universal electric configuration for all the atoms in the all, all all the elements in the periodic table. So I'll be making several and probably one that's for practice encompassing all of them. So in this video, I'll talk about the electric configuration basic stuff and the case for atoms so if you saw the one on principles you may have seen me like write something like 1s2 2s2 2p6 and so on and what this is this is the electron configuration of an element so I think it was sulfur the one I did and let me what this represents is I'm going to separate this as you'll see like this number here there's this letter here and there's this radical here not radical sub sub superscript sorry so let's separate everything and define it first the number in this case the one represents n so the principal quantum number. So the higher the, the number, the higher the energy. Because the higher the end, the, the more energy there is in that orbital. And then this S re represents the subshell. So the letter represents the subshell. So it could be S, P, D, or F. And finally, the superscript will be the number of electrons in that subshell in that subshell in subshell so let's yeah uh, I'm going to define the number of electrons that could be in in any subshell max I mean max this should be the maximum so the way you do this is as I said in the previous video, one subshell, one orbital, can have a maximum of two electrons. And let's say for the case of F, S, P, D, F, that's, let's make a table, yeah. So, okay, this is the subshell, this, this part right here, and then this will be the or in the number of orientations or, or the ML pretty much so this will be one it, because as you may recall the S subshell is just a sphere so there's there isn't really any way you can divide this or look at it from a different axis the P will have three PX, PY and PZ and then the D and F will have 5 and 7 and I already said that there will be 2 electrons max per, per orbital or per orientation so you can just multiply this and that will tell you the maximum number of electrons that can be in that subshell so in the S subshell there will be a maximum of 2 electrons in the P subshell there will be 6 D there will be 10 and the F, they'll, they'll be 14. So, if the subshell is full, 
let's say for the case of s, you'll write it as 1 or 2 or whatever, depending on the n, s2. That's because it's full. But it could be 1 as 1 for hydrogen, let's say, or 1 as 2 for, for helium. Or, let's say, it could be, it will be 2 b6 if it's full, or 3d10, or the for the case of f it's 14. So that's when when the subshell is full. But it can it, it can tell you it can be like a 2p5, a 2p3. It doesn't have to. It depends on the element you're you're writing the electron configuration on. And before I get into the reason or like the way you write it or you know how to write it, uh, I'll, there's four ways you can. Uh, it's it's actually three, but but let's say it's four. So the first way you can write, or your or your or your first way of notation, sorry, notation, will be the what's called as the S P D F notation, and this one is condensed. And what that means is that let's do the the example of carbon. Carbon has a six, so yeah, this this number represents the number of electrons it has. So that can pretty much tell you how it is. We'll start with a one s two, two s two. We got four now, and then two p two. And don't worry about how to write it yet. I'll teach you that in like a minute. I just want to to show you the w the many ways you you can write it very much. The then is the SPDF notation, but this time it's expanded. So let's I'm going to use the same example for all of them. It's going to be one S two, two S two, and then you will separate the following subshell into its different mls or orientations so it'll be 2p x and 2p y and we have one in each and not many people write it like this because it'll take a lifetime very much to write the whole thing so there we go one and two number three is what i wrote in the previous video you saw me doing this so uh, carbon 1s 2s 2p and it's writing the electrons like that you have 1 2 1 2 and then 1 and 1 so you may have to even not not do this again because if you don't understand this watch the video on principles it's it's one of the rules that I that I explained before, and this is called the electron orbital drag diagram nomenclature. Electron orbital diagram. And that's bad. So this is this is really considered a fourth type of nomenclature, but it's it's a noble gas. Noble gas abbreviation. So, so instead of writing the whole thing like one s two two s two two p six and so on, you can just pretty much write the noble gas. Let's say yeah. Let's go with fluorine. I'm going to show you how it will be in the SPDF notation. Actually, I should do carbon. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do carbon just just as hey, in the same. So you can see that it's one s two, two s two, two p two. From the previous examples, and the way you do it with the noble gas is just just write the noble gas that's before it. So you look at the periodic table, and the one that's before it, it's helium. So 
then you just go like all right it's 2s2 2p2 because helium the the way the electron configuration of helium is simply 1s2 so you it's like putting in if you you can just think of it as math you put in that as x so this is pretty much your x and you put it as a variable there it's but in it, but it's constant <laughs> uh, so this is really nice to to the electron configurations that are pretty long and you'll see when I do the more examples on it how useful this this is now for the sake of the length of the video I don't I don't want to make it too long I'll I'll teach you how to figure out if it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 or 2p6 in the following video so this video stays a little shorter and it's only like the second part of the principles you can consider that so I'll put the link uh, right here and if you liked it as all if you thought it was helpful as always like it and be sure to share it with your friends